Anybody, any questions on what you've just done? Any problems? Once again, one of the difficulties we're bound to experience in this class is that most of you are young and fit, and it's not often that we find muscles that are that tight. So in terms of practice, you've just got to go through the routines, imagine what it would be like if you had a short range, and just make sure that you can do the techniques, okay? And when it comes to the assessments, it will be a similar sort of pattern. We'll understand the fact that the chances are the individual you're working on will not necessarily be tight. So we're just looking for a demonstration of, of the technique. Okay. So now we're going to move on to target the rotator cuff muscles, or at least three quarters of them. Uh, we're not going to be doing supraspinatus, but we're going to start with teres minor and um, infraspinatus. And then we're also going to do subscapularis. <coughs> So if we start with teres minor and infraspinatus, if they contract together, what action are they going to bring about? Speak up, camera can't hear you. External rotation. Thank you very much. External rotation. So once again, your starting position is all important. So we're going to take the arm out, horizontally abducted. It's not important at this stage to actually bring the shoulder out off the, the edge of the couch for this technique because we're looking for rotation in the humerus and therefore there's no horizontal abduction that's going to put pressure on the front of that capsule. What is important is that we do get into a horizontal, horizontally abducted position, so absolutely level with the shoulder and also horizontal from the floor as well, so we're not taking the elbow down or up. Okay? One hand pivots the elbow. So that remains stable in that position, and then the other can simply do your external rotation or your internal rotation. So starting point to stretch infraspinatus and teres minor would be, now that we know the, the muscle actions. Sorry? Anybody? We know that to contract, they externally <coughs> rotate. To do internal. So we're going to internally rotate and just see what his range is. And we can see there, that's about the limit of the range. That springiness okay, indicates we're at the point of buying. So we'll go to that position. And once again, we'll do our 12 seconds of passive stretch. And then from there, we're going to get them to contract. And once again, keep in mind the fact that this muscle or these, this pair of muscles are now at their longest length. So get, trying to get 70% of maximal voluntary contraction isn't easy and you may feel that they're particularly weak in this position so don't be surprised. Okay so we've had at least 12 seconds so if you can just contract by pushing your arm against my hand gently gently four, five, six, seven, and hold it there okay and then we count down through the remaining seven seconds to get our 12 in total again relax Deep breath in, and as he breathes out, so we gently rotate that arm. Look at that, we're getting a good sort of 15 degrees or so additional range there. Okay, and of course, if we want to do subscapularis, that's responsible for internal rotation. So, our <laughs> stretch position again, maintaining that position of the humerus, is to pivot the elbow and just gently apply pressure onto the wrist, and we get our 12 seconds stretch from there, and then again for your build and hold, they're going to push up in that direction. Okay? Any questions on that? All quite clear? Okay. Have a go at that. 